it was an amazing sight. Every household should have something like this. Hello Rocket fans and welcome back to the Copenhagen Suborbitals Rocket Show. The cameraman Sarunas wanted me to give you a shakedown of the new large water flow test stand, so that's what we're gonna do. The background of the water flow test stand is injector development. We've so far been developing and, and uh, improving on our small single element injectors, the swell injectors, but we're gonna need to put a lot of those, about 200 or 250, into a very large injector, and then we have to characterize that one. We're running with certain pressure drops, intended pressure drops throughout our propellant system. And we want to make sure that when we run at a certain engine pressure, a chamber pressure and a certain, certain tank pressures, then we get exactly the mass flow of the two propellants that we want. And to understand the dynamics of that and make sure that we get a reasonably accurate first try on our oxidizer fuel ratio, we need to do water testing. Now, this thing here is good for testing an entire injector. It's way too big for doing single elements. We have a small water flow test then for that. But I'll go through it with you and then uh, give you a, a, a shakedown of what it is. So right now you're looking, we work our way backwards on this one. You're seeing two elbows at top of the discharge pipes. These two elbows will come out about a meter, then join together in the shower head or the injector uh, uh, fixture, which is gonna be probably right above my head. Right where I'm standing here, we're gonna have a very large open uh, water tank to capture all the water that comes out of that injector. And it's gonna be a whole lot. We've got two independent lines, identical, one on the right, one on the left. Each of them consists of a four inch discharge pipe and the little narrowing part we have here, the constricted part, and the two pressure ports are part of the Venturi flow meter system. We need to know how much water comes through this when we open it. Then we have two large solenoid valves, also four inch, and we're gonna use or actuate those to open and close for the flows. We can run them either simultaneously, one each, uh, it doesn't really matter. Then this thing consists of four tanks. And in this case, we have the two front tanks here, are the water tanks. Capacity approximately 400 liters. What's well, a little difficult to see from this side, but easier to see from over here, is the joint at the top of the tanks that go backwards and has a very large valve on top of them. The four inch piping you'll see on top of the tanks is the air path going from the air tanks behind the two water tanks. So we fill up one tank with water, put compressed air in the other one, and then we can open the valve between the two tanks and pressurize the water. Then if you take a walk around here, yeah, we fitted it with a nice couple of ladders because you have to actuate that valve up there and it requires a bit of force to actuate a valve that size. Continuing further around it, we get to the, to the control panel. Now, this stuff here is old school, completely analog, pressure sensors and so on. We have the possibility to add uh, electrical sensors, electrical pressure sensors to it and so on. Of course, the flow meters are purely electronic, but from a ground point of view, all of this, all these systems can be actuated manually. Now, we, first of all, we have the water distribution manifold here. We can apply or put on two different kind of pumps or two water inlets of whatever kind we can find. And then water from this manifold can be distributed to the two water tanks using either this manual ball valve or this one over here. That's the way we fill it up. You will also see two small semi-transparent plastic tubes here. These are just uh, Teflon tubes, but they're connected to the water tanks at the bottom and at the top. So whenever the water level rises in one of the water tanks, there'll be a very nice little meniscus here 
showing us exactly how much water we have in the tanks. Moving up one step, we get to the air distribution manifold. And again, we have two inlets here, so we can put on a couple of compressors to do the hard work. And then we have, again, distribution here. We can pressurize each tank using these two ball valves here. Um, and then we can use these uh, pressure gauges here to run at whatever pressure we want. Now, there are four pressure meters here because um, we try to see if we can reuse some of the compressed air we have in the system. So let's say you, uh, you empty one tank. That means that you will still have a lot of compressed air in those two tanks combined. We shut off the valve at the top and then we can actually uh, start pressurizing this tank again, for example. In the meantime, if we've run the other system dry and need to, um, to, to uh, fill that one up with compressed air, then we can start using the redistribution manifold up here to move and open two valves at a time. So taking from one tank with a higher pressure, open that valve, get the manifold pressurized, then open another valve and then shunt the uh, compressed air, remaining compressed air, to one of the other tanks that needs it. Then we got a couple of, uh, we got some bottom valves in case when we're done with a, a test run, then we simply just uh, bleed the last water out of the system. This system here will be able to sustain a BPM 100 injector for approximately seven seconds if we fill it to the top. That's just how much propellant that speaker rocket engine is gonna need. So this tool here is indispensable for getting our injectors right and get a good chance of lighting the engine properly the first time. Um, but we also had to scale it up simply because this, the, the BPM 100 engine is gonna be so big. Uh, we, none of the previous uh, equipment we had were capable of running the mass flows we need on the BPM 100 engine. So the water flow test and the arch water flow test stand is now complete. And as far as we think, this is the biggest privately owned water flow test stand for rocket engine development in at least Northern Europe. So we're gonna have a lot of fun with that. So when you've really completed a nice piece of equipment, like the large water flow test stand, which can supply water to injectors, but you kind of want to celebrate a little and have some fun. So what do you do with a very large water flow test stand? And well, the simplest and most fun thing we could think of was, as you can see, removing the top two elbows. We only used one string, so just removed one elbow, put a couple of hundred liters of water or 300 into it, ramped it up to its maximum pressure, and then that means the opening was pointing straight up with nothing to impede the flow. Then we opened the main valve on top of it and then just looked really, really high. It was an amazing sight. Every household should have something like this. Copenhagen Suborbitals is a non-profit all-volunteer project. The reason we are getting so close to reaching space on our speaker rocket is because all of our crowdfunding supporters. If you've been following this project and feel passionate about new ways of exploring space and building rockets, you can help us out by going over to our website www.compsub.com and becoming a supporter with a small monthly or one-time donation that helps us pay workshop rent and buy materials. And in return, you get all these insider videos on building a space program, which you don't really get anywhere else. So on behalf of everybody at Copenhagen Suborbitals, thank you for your support and we'll see you next time.